Across the state, healthcare workers say they are increasingly working in fear of being assaulted by patients and others seeking refuge in emergency departments. Our Eichmann David investigates what's behind the violence and potential remedies for healthcare's front lines. Ike? It was just a few years ago, healthcare workers were viewed as heroes as they braved the uncertainties of a worldwide pandemic. Today, many are still on the job facing a different fear. Instead of a deadly virus, it's the violent outbursts of their patients. There we go. It's an average day for Myla Lindrus <laughs> and her five month old baby Alina. Hi, silly lady. <laughs> at their Rutland home. What's it like being a mom? Oh, it's the best. It's, it's something I always dreamed about. Another dream fulfilled for Lindros was becoming a nurse. I love it. I love being a nurse and I love, I love helping people. Lindros is a nurse in the emergency department at Rutland Regional Medical Center, where she works right until the last day of her pregnancy. While on the job and just about eight months pregnant last June, there was a patient she will never forget. I had been warned she was kind of resistant to um, being discharged. Lindrew says the patient, then 48-year-old Brandy Richards, continued to be resistant by standing on wheelchairs and urinating and throwing things. Then things escalated quickly. And she just kind of suddenly lost it and launched herself up and across the room um, and tackled me and I went backwards over a stretcher that was behind me. The patient got on top of Lindrus and punched her in the stomach 32 weeks into her pregnancy. And I had these two like crystal clear back-to-back -back thoughts of the nursery is not finished and this isn't worth it. Like this job, this woman isn't worth it. Brandy, you're being charged with simple assault. Security and other nurses stepped in and Lindrus was brought up to labor and delivery to get evaluated. And I heard her heartbeat and I just started sobbing and I just like cried and cried. That's better. With this sigh of relief, mother and baby were healthy, but those moments of fear will be hard to forget. I see her and I can't, I can't imagine my life without her and I'm sorry. Um, it's just, you know, she, she had been my dream. But our entire department was shaken up about that for a while. Sheena Fisher is director of emergency services at RRMC. She says Lindrus isn't the only one in the emergency department who's been assaulted. And she's just one example of many. It's happening a lot more frequent than anyone knows. According to Press Ganey, an organization that runs healthcare surveys nationwide, two nurses were assaulted every hour in 2022. And in 2018, healthcare workers made up 73% of non-fatal workplace injuries. When I first started in emergency medicine, I never thought twice about being assaulted at work. But now it's an everyday fear. RRMC documented 190 workplace violence events in 2022. Patient on staff violence is impacting the overall workforce and some of our nurses are actually changing their professions, questioning their purpose as a nurse. The feeling across the state is that it is on the rise, especially after COVID. Uh, for some reason, it, things have gone up. Attacks on healthcare workers are investigated by police. Most of the time, it results in a citation. And then that's where we get involved. And referred to a state's attorney like Rutland County's Ian Sullivan for prosecution. From the cases we're seeing, there is a common through line of substance abuse and mental health, or a combination of both. Um, those are factors in a lot of the cases we see. Well, I'm not going there. Sullivan currently has 24 cases of assaults on healthcare workers on his desk and believes there are many more that don't get reported. When people are making a choice between their profession, caring for other people, and their own safety, I think we run the risk of having our ERs and other healthcare systems empty out of qualified professionals. So, how do you prevent that? I think accountability is one of the first steps. Let me see your birth. As for Lindrus, she's back in the ED working, living with the trauma. This was my job that I had chosen. 
and I put her in danger trying to take care of sick people. As for Richards, the patient who allegedly assaulted Lynn Drews were awaiting a decision from the judge if there will be a felony charges or if the charges will just be dismissed. But many in health care and the legislature want to add more legal consequences for offenders as many just get citations tomorrow in part two. I'll take a closer look at that proposal and why critics say it won't do much to protect health care workers. Reporting in the studio, Ike Ben David, Channel 3 News.